right now, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I know some of you are very happy that you have a radio station in town that is broadcasting. Um, you wouldn't know it by looking out the window. It looks like a beautiful day, but we're still recovering from Hurricane Irma. The station is back in form, thank goodness. Um, I know some of you have uh, probably a few days, maybe even a week to go before your electricity is turned on. So thank you for tuning in, either in your car uh, portable radios, whatever else you're using. And uh, just to just to let you know, we got some good stuff to listen to. Dick Lair is on the phone. I, I believe he was on with us once before. He wrote about um, Whitey Bulger. Remember, Robin? Yes, I a do. And uh, his, his book was made into a movie starring Johnny Depp. I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, so I don't know if that was before the movie or not. Um, anyway, he's got a new book. It's called Trell. It's a novel for young adults. Uh, Dick is a Boston-based reporter, a professor of journalism at Boston University. Um, and the book Trell is, the, the cover of the book is on the, the streaming video that you'll be looking at if you go later on or if you're looking at it right now on YouTube. Dick, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning to you. Where are you? Are you in Boston right now? I am in Boston, thanks. Yep. How exciting was it, by the way, when they made that in your book in Black Mass into a movie? Yeah, no, it was it was quite exciting. Uh, I had a lot of different feelings about it. I was concerned, on the one hand, as a journalist who had um, you know, written a lot about the gangster Bulger and the corrupt FBI, both in the Globe and then in the book Black Mass, that, you know, that they would Hollywoodize it and romanticize it or glamorize it, because it's a dark story. Um, but it was also pretty exciting to watch Warner Brothers and you know all these big name actors, Johnny Depp, tackle tackle the story. And and in the end, uh, um, while they moved some things around because it is an adaptation in terms of chronologies, uh, they didn't shy away from the darkness at the heart of it. Uh, so I was uh, quite pleased with the outcome. So tell me about Trowell. I have some questions, but I want to hear your thought. Well, tell me about Trowell first. Sure. Trell is something obviously quite different for me. Uh, my whole career has been spent writing fact-based stories, journalism, and Trell is a novel. Um, and at the center of the story is, is a young girl, 14-year-old girl named Trell, um, who, is, who teams up uh, with a reporter from the Boston Globe. And the main action of the story is how they work their way through the neighborhood, trying to uncover evidence to show that Trell's father has been uh, in prison for a murder he didn't commit. Who did he? Who did he murder? Well, he was convicted of murdering a. Uh, you know, and this was when Trell herself was. She was just a newborn baby girl when this all went down. Mm -hmm. Fourteen years earlier, her father Rivera Taylor was convicted uh, in a gang street gang shooting that resulted in the death of an innocent bystander, uh -huh. uh, another girl, a girl named Ruby Graham. Uh, it was a murder at the time, you know, in the novel that just outraged the city, and there was a demand for justice, and the police went on a huge manhunt to try to find Ruby Graham's killer, and they ended up uh, grabbing a young d drug dealer named Romero Taylor, Trout's well, father, at the, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and basically framed him. So is this from a, a real case that you were, you were writing about um, as a journalist, I mean? Yeah, good. Yeah, no, good, good question, because um, I didn't take this leap into fiction without what I'll call a safety net. Yeah, it is inspired by a, a real case, murder case in Boston, that I wrote about and reported on for the Boston Globe, uh, in which a drug dealer, young young man in Roxbury back in the late 80s, was arrested and convicted in the shooting death of a young girl. Um, and my reinvestigation, uh, my investigation for the Globe, in the, uh, in the early 2000s, did uncover evidence showing that he had been wrongfully convicted, and, mm. and after court, uh, he, he was released. So that's, you know, there's that, this background for me, journalistically, uh, and in covering and doing that investigation, um, I met members of this uh, young man's family and learned that he had a baby girl when he was arrested in the late 80s. And she had grown up with her daddy in prison, and she was always saying, Daddy, when are you coming home? And as it, that never left me. And so just a couple of years ago, I, for a whole bunch of reasons, decided to say, to you know, want to try writing uh, a novel and uh, something for younger readers. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I said, well, what if this daughter, what if this girl, uh, I call her Trell, 
what if she's the main character? And what if she's the one on a, on a mission, on a quest for justice? And she teams up with a reporter. Well, kind so of, that was kind yeah. of the inspiration for everything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is very uh, uh, relatable to the young readers today because so many times the books for young readers are fantasy and uh, sometimes you need a book like this to make them, to keep them grounded in the real world. Yeah, no, I hope so. And, uh, you know, um, most of my work uh, as a journalist has been for an adult audience. And the work that, you know, whether it's for the Globe on the Spotlight team, the investigative team, you know, it's, it's, it's journalism that, um, that exposes wrongdoing or failures in, you know, in the system, like the criminal justice system that sometimes puts the wrong people in prison. Um, and then, so I really wanted a story for, for younger readers that can learn and read about that those failures. And the other big thing, which is obviously something really important to me, is that they're doing it through journalism, a trail in this reporter. And so it's a story that I hope resonates and, and conveys um, the important role that journalism does play in, in our in our lives. So I'm curious about the 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 convictions of a journalist uh, in, in it, when you read the newspaper the way it's supposed to come down is that the articles are, are factual and not slanted by the journalist the editorial obviously has the freedom to do that but as a journalist writing a fictional novel are, are you a little bit freer to maybe express some uh, political leanings one way or the other or may, maybe uh, so, social leanings maybe that's a better word than political yeah, no, I mean, I guess I, I, guess I could, um, but in, in terms of the storyline and the plot that's at the center of Trell, it's, it's really a, a kind of a mystery and a suspense um, plot-driven story um, about, you know, this, this partnership between a, uh, a young girl in Roxbury and a journalist seeking the truth. Um, nice. Well, this is, and this, is so when the get into politics. this is when the movie people need to come knocking on your door. They need to do this one now. <laughs> Maybe they will. Well, uh, I mean, there is good news on that front. Uh, um, even before the book came out last week, uh, a film company has optioned its its movie rights. So that is the nice. first step. I mean, there's many more to come, but that's the first step. We've spoken to so many authors that I have had authors tell us horror stories where they don't they don't like the outcome of the the movie relationship with uh, the author. Um, so far, so good for you, though, huh? Yeah, so far, and I'll keep my fingers crossed if indeed <laughs> I'll get some traction. Yeah. Uh, but you also have a friendship developing in this book between Trowell yeah, and I mean, uh, Paul, I believe. Right, and there's a kid from the neighborhood who um, she has known most of her life, um, and he's always kind of been antagonistic. And then um, it, what, what Trowell learns is that it's actually because he kind of likes her. Um mm -hmm. So, uh, in a trial, in addition to working with um, the journalist, Clemens Bittner, his name in the book, um, she starts to um, lean on Paul, and they start to do some of the, uh, you know, work together on the streets, uh, tracking people down and looking for new leads and c kind of uncover the evidence. Yeah, that's a, that's a neat little friendship that develops, too, right, over the course of the novel. And, and I guess when I was leaning toward the social observation part of it, I was thinking in terms of the, the wrongly convicted, and, and that's that sort of topic. It seems like you see so many of these stories. You can't ever give those people their lives back. No. No, no, you can't, and that's why. Yeah, no, and I just think, um, right, and, and writing a novel and, and, and just young readers to at least experience through a, a novel, um, the, that reality in our mm -hmm. lives. I mean, we we've all learned, especially through the Innocence Project out of New York, with the DNA that uh, you know too many times the system does fail us. I, I thank God for DNA. I'm glad we are able to figure that one out. At least at least some people will be. I, I'm thinking there'll still be some mistakes, but at least that can prove some of the uh, f or the wrongful convictions. Um, uh, the book is called Trail. I have a copy of it right here. If you want the copy that was sent to us, you are welcome to call me right now and claim it. I only have one, so the rest of us have to go buy it. I found it on Amazon. Oh, by the way, <laughs> number one in teen and young adult careers fiction ebooks. Did you nice. know that? You're number one in one of the categories here. I didn't know that, so that's nice to hear. Yeah, when did it come out? Uh, like yesterday two days so, ago wow. so, so what that means nice. is that the kids who read this kind of book normally are starting to spread the word and get, get the buzz going 
Yeah, no, well, that'd be nice. Oh, very cool. Um, well, thank you for being on the air with us. Do you have a website you want to direct us to? It's dicklayer.com. All one word, yeah. L- and then there's Candlewick Press, my publisher, which is probably even the better okay. site for Al. C- Candlewick Press, and Dick Lair spells his last name L-E-H-R. Let me uh, take one of these calls real quick and uh, give the book away. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Hey, this is Janet. How you guys doing? Hey, Janet. Good. You're going to like this one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'd like that. All right. Thank you, Janet. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Uh, Dick, again, thank you for being on the show with us today. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. We will be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It is going to stay warm and humid today. We'll have sun mixed with clouds and there'll be an afternoon thunderstorm. The high 86 to 90. Partly to mostly cloudy tonight, a low 73 to 78. And another afternoon thunderstorm tomorrow, especially inland. Otherwise, partly sunny with highs of 87 to 89. Partly sunny and highs of 86.